Hello friends, you're welcome to the Search the Scriptures lesson. Uh, we're looking at um, the book of Numbers. We are still on the series on the book of Numbers, chapter 19. If you have your Bible, you turn with me to Numbers, chapter 19. And before we start, let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another time in your presence. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for your precepts for your laws, your command, for your word laid down for us. We thank you for how you have been teaching us all through, guiding us, helping us. Lord, we ask that even in this study, you will speak to us. Teach us. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may behold wonderful things out of your word. Breathe upon your word, Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray amen um if you have your bible turn with me to the book of numbers chapter 19 and i read from verse 1 it says and the lord spake unto moses and unto aaron saying this is the ordinance of the law which the lord hath commanded saying Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and to which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger, and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh, and her blood with her dung shall be burned. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. Now we're looking at the topic, purification of the unclean. Purification of the unclean. God had chosen Aaron and his sons to bear the iniquities of the children of Israel, and conduct different sacrifices to make atonement for their sins. The Levites were chosen to assist them in their priestly office and in the work of the tabernacle. The book of Numbers chapter 18 deals with legal regulations concerning the duties of the priests and Levites as well as the portion for their service to God and his people. To prevent them from taking after the heathen and their satanic rituals, God enacted different laws for the children of Israel. The laws which covered sundry matters such as the mode of worship, sanctity in the sanctuary, um, civil relationship, cleanliness, ETC were aimed at making them retain their peculiarity and distinctiveness as God's chosen people among the heathen. They were to remain holy as a prerequisite for the abiding presence of God. This study is unique to the book of Numbers and it deals with the provision for cleansing the Israelites who have become unclean as a result of their contact with dead bodies. People would touch the dead would be cut off from Israel if they were not cleansed with the water of purification before coming into the tabernacle. It says in verse 20, But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation because he had defiled the sanctuary of the lord the water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him he is on 
unclean. We are looking at a study purification of the unclean. And we are considering three points. Point number one, provision for purification of the unclean. Provision for purification of the unclean. And point number two, particulars of and procedure for purification. Particulars of procedure for purification. And point number three, penalty for disobedience and perpetuity of the ordinance. Now let's come to point number one, provision for purification of, of the unclean. Provision for purification of the unclean. Now I'll come to the text in Numbers chapter 19 and I'll read from verse 1. He says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his own. So the Lord saw the challenge of uncleanness among the children of Israel and he made provision for their purification. The same way the Almighty saw the uncleanness of the people, the world, you and I. And he made provision. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. The Lamb of God. He sent him to pay the price for us. The children of Israel were commanded to bring an unblemished and spotless red heifer upon which no yoke had been placed for the purification of the unclean. From the declaration, we learn a number of lessons. One, the people were to provide the sacrifice. The people were to provide the sacrifice. You must be willing. The message here is that everybody has a part to play to enjoy God's boundless blessings. Two, the redness of the Hepha symbolizes all forms of sin for which Christ sacrifice his life on the cross of mankind prophet isaiah illustrated this as he pleaded with the sinners he said though your sins be as scarlet scarlet is red though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool the blood of the lamb of god was shed to cleanse depraved humanity from sin and its defilement that is why jesus came he shed his blood on the cross of calvary to make an atonement for us to purge us to cleanse us to purify us that is why he came, to redeem us back to the Father. And three, the spotlessness of the Hepha represents the infinite holiness of Christ, the sinless Lamb of God. He was without sin. Four, the Hepha upon which no yoke has been placed is comparable to to Christ, who is never under the yoke of sin, who was never under the yoke of sin. It also stands for his willful submission to the work of human redemption. Five, the symbolic red heifer that was to be slaughtered without the camp of Israel equally points to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus outside the city wall of Golgotha. The Bible says, um, 
the Hifa will be slaughtered without the camp. It means outside the camp. And the book of Hebrews in chapter 13 says, For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Suffered outside the gate. He was crucified outside the gate, the city gate. He says, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Bearing his his reproach come to the text in numbers chapter 19 and i read from verse 4 and eliezer the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times so eliezer the priest the son of aaron not the high priest aaron was the high priest but Eliezer will take the blood of the Hephar and with his finger he will sprinkle um, the blood seven times on the entrance of the tabernacle. He would sprinkle the blood. You see, all these are symbols. The typology of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, his blood, and everything that Christ did to redeem mankind, to sanctify us and to bring us into the faith. All these things that Eliza did, the sacrifice, the hepha, the lamb, all those things were pointing to Christ. So we studied this to see what Christ did. It was leading us, remember as a schoolmaster, taking us to Christ. So if we read all these things without seeing Christ and these pictures, then we are missing the point. Christ died for us. As Eliezer the priest sprinkled the blood, Christ also shed his blood for us to make an atonement for us. He died on the cross a perfect sacrifice. Eliezer sprinkling the blood seven times in theology, um, it means perfection. It means completeness. So Christ's blood, Christ's death on the cross is a perfect sacrifice for us. We need no hefa. We don't need hefa. We don't need a lamb, a bullock to make sacrifices anymore. Why? Because Jesus, a lamb, Jesus, the lamb of God, Jesus, the one, the sinless one, gave himself for us. And in verse 5, he says, And one shall burn the Hepha in his sight, her skin, her flesh, and her blood with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take a cedar wood and a hyssop and a scarlet and cast it in the midst of the burning of the hefar. Then the priest shall wash his clothes. He shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterward, he shall come into the camp. And the priest shall be unclean until the evening. The sufferings of Christ was also typified in the ordinance. The total burning of the Hepha by fire alludes to the excruciating suffering of Christ as he bore the sins of humanity on the cross. It also refers to the complete offering of his whole body and soul as he sacrificed for sin once and for all. The priest shall afterward wash his clothes and flesh in water before coming into the camp and remain unclean till evening after the purification ceremony. This act reveals the imperfection of the priesthood in the Old Testament. Jesus, our high priest, 
is sinless. He was never unclean. Perfect and holy and his sacrifice for sin is flawless and complete. Jesus. Come to the text and look at verse, verse 10. And he that God directs the ashes, the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statue forever. He says, and it shall be a statue to the children of Israel and to the strangers that sojourneth among them. So God made provisions for not just the children of Israel, but for also the heathens, the strangers that were sojourning with them. So likewise, he sent his son, not to the Jews only, not to Israel only, but to the world. In John 3, 16, John chapter 3, verse 16, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, everyone can benefit from the cleansing power in the blood of the Lamb. Sinners must first confess and forsake their sins to obtain pardon and cleansing by Jesus' blood. Believers can have sanctification experience through earnest prayer of faith in his blood now we are moving to the next point point number two particulars of the particulars of and procedure for purification particulars of and procedure for purification in the text in numbers chapter 19 and i'll read from verse 11 it says he that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever toucheth the dead body of any man that is dead, and purifieth not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. You see, a dead person was regarded as unclean. And anyone who touched the corpse under the mosaic law automatically became unclean. Why those who touched the dead body of a beast remained unclean till evening? Those who touched human dead bodies remained unclean for seven days. If you touch, if they touched the the dead body of an animal, the person would remain unclean till the evening. That was under the mosaic law, not in our dispensation. But this was pointing to our dispensation. Now sinners, ungodly, unbelievers are called dead. When the prodigal son left home, and he returned. The father said, My son was dead, but now he's alive. So, if we're out of the grace of God, we are out of the love of God, we are out of the family of God, we are considered dead. But if we come back to him, ask for his mercies, his grace and ask for him to purge us with his blood cleanse us from every sin we forsake our sins and come to him we come alive there's a spiritual death and a spiritual life so this was pointing to our error the dead and if a man becomes unclean 
you mingle with the dead, you sit, you feed on what the congregation of the dead feeds on. You remain with a scornful, like in Psalm 1 verse 1, says, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. You don't walk in their counsels. That is what the world is telling us here. You don't remain in the congregation of the dead. The dead were considered unclean. And if a man is dead spiritually, he is considered unclean. Except he comes to God, he comes to Christ and say, Lord, forgive me. And he forsakes his sins and to the Lord. And ask the Lord to purge him, wash him with his blood. Now come to verse 14. This is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. The defilement of an Israelite through the touching of a dead body has spiritual implication for all heaven-bound believers. The defiled Israelites who refuse to be cleansed would remain unclean. Those who reject God's approved way of salvation will remain in their sins. Jesus says, I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Now come to verse 18. And a clean person shall take his soap and dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the persons that were there and upon him that touched a bone or one slain or one dead, or a grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day, and on the seventh day, and on the seventh day he shall purify himself, and wash his clothes, and bath himself in water, and shall be clean at evening. You see, telling us that, the unclean cannot sprinkle the water upon the unclean. The blind cannot lead the blind. A sinner cannot win a soul. A sinner cannot tell a sinner about the grace of God. You must first, the sinner must first become saved. The sinner must first confess his or her sins before the Lord. And after the person is purged, washed, cleansed, saved, then the person is qualified to go tell another sinner, another unclean person about the grace of Christ, about the grace, the grace of God. A clean person must, must be the one to go out to tell the unclean about the saving grace of God. I pray the Lord will help us and give us more grace in the name of Jesus. Now let's come to the third point, point number three. Penalty for disobedience and perpetuity of the ordinance. Come to the text in Numbers chapter 19 and I read from verse 20. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation, because he hath defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of suppression hath not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean, and it shall be a perpetual statue unto them, that he that sprinkled the water of suppression shall wash his clothes, 
and he that toucheth the water of separation shall be unclean until evening it says but the man in verse 20 but the man that shall be unclean the man that shall be unclean and purify not and shall purify not himself that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation so if a man intentionally or mistakenly gets defiled unclean he would undergo those purification rites the water will be sprinkled on him he would wash his clothes bath his flesh for some days and after all these things he will be clean but the lord gave an ordinance that whosoever a man that shall not purify himself a man that would say i will remain in my uncleanness the person that says i don't care what moses or aaron is saying i'll do what pleases me the same way you might have been hearing the word of god the saving gospel of christ you've heard of his death on the cross of calvary how he suffered how he bled how he was nailed on the cross how they pierced his sides and the crown of thorns was placed on his head he bled he shed his blood to make an atonement for you and I for our sins and after all these getting the knowledge you insist in your sins you insist on not getting saved you're bent on doing evil remaining unclean the Lord said to Moses and Aaron to tell the children of Israel that the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation the sinner cannot get to heaven a sinner, an unclean person, cannot enter there. Sin cannot enter there. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 11, it says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still he said behold i come quickly my command stands my judgment stands my words stand whether you decide to remain unclean whether you decide to remain clean righteous waiting for his coming he said my word stands if you want to remain ungodly remain if you want to remain clean come on please remain clean he said behold i come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in 
through the gates into the city, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, the paradise where he has gone to prepare for us. And verse 15 says, for without a dogs, without a dogs, the unclean, you no know, dogs were called unclean animals they were unclean animals dogs and if a man decides to remain unclean remain unrighteous decides to remain and dwell in his sins on that day he says in that city for without he says for outside the city for without are dogs and sorcerers and homongers and murderers and idolaters or whosoever loveth and maketh a lie whosoever loveth and maketh a lie but why are we listening to this why are we studying the scriptures because our Lord and Savior came to die for us. He's calling us. He said, let us come. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be pure and righteous. He has made all things ready for us. If you want to be clean, come to the Savior. Ask for his cleansing power in his blood. Why not come and submit yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, purge me, wash me. I turn away from my sins. I repent. And in verse 17, he says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is attached come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely the water of life is made available to sprinkle you to cleanse you to wash you come and take it freely it's made available he says come and take it freely are you saved if you're not, this is a time for you to come. Come and enjoy um, what Christ did for you. Your liberty, your redemption. And he shed his blood to make an atonement and remission of our sins. Why not just say, Lord, help me. If you want Jesus into your heart, if you want that blood to purify and to cleanse you, you're ready to make a change. Maybe like um, the unclean people that defiled themselves with dead bodies. Maybe you've gone into the congregation of the dead. Now you're acting like the dead and you're far away from God. And you want to be restored. You want to be cleansed. You want to be purged. You want to be called a child of God again. You want your name to be written in the book of life. I want to pray with you. Wherever you are hearing my voice, just place your hands on your chest and repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I've seen your word. I know you paid it all for me. You're the Lamb of God. I take care of the saints of the world. Lord, I surrender and I come to you because I cannot save myself. I need you to wash me, purge me, purify me from every unrighteousness, cleanse me. It is your promise. Though my sins be a scarlet, you will make it white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be wool. They shall be as wool. It is only your blood that can wash me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Have mercy. 
and write my name in the book of life. I thank you because you died for me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you have said the short prayer and you're saved, God bless you. I'll compare you to read the Bible, stay far away from the congregation of the dead, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, read the word, meditate in the word, pray every day, um, continue in the grace and the love of God, and the Lord will help you. Um, we want to help you also in your newfound faith to help you walk with Christ. And there's a link connect with Christ in the description box. Click on that link, connect with Christ, and it will take you to a site where you fill the form. Please fill the right details, impute the right details so that we'll be able to reach you and help you continue in the faith. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.